BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down all in His prophecies what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective, for without the roots the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnants Call. Welcome to The Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. I am your host for the show, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation, where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua, the Messiah, as one people following the 66 books of the Lord, from Genesis to Revelation. Today, once again, I am honored to be a part of a group of men that have honor and dignity and seat seats, and one has a beard. Uh, <laughs> Um, I am joined on the line by Rav Will McCubbins of the great state of North Carolina and Rav Eduardo Manjaris from Israel to Ecuador to Amar Estados Unidos, America. We're going to be talking. What's our topic for tonight? What can we talk about tonight on the Sledgehammer Show? The topic is, your opinion does not matter to God. Your opinion does not matter to God. A lot of crazy things, a lot of... Let's start off with scripture. Divarim, Deuteronomy 12, verse 8 and 9. Let's start out there and get our discussion going. You will not do things the way we do them here today, where everyone does whatever his own opinion seems right, because you haven't yet arrived at the rest and inheritance which Jehovah your Elohim is giving you. That's the biggest issue. You know, when you're following the Lord, God does not care about your opinion. Let me say that again. Because it's a monarchy, God does not care about your opinion. You can have a good heart. You think you can have a good heart. You can think, you know, you do things right. But unless, you know, it, it's that balancing that God wants. But God's things are more weighty. Okay? So he's saying here in Divarim, 12, 8, Deuteronomy 12, you will not do things the way we do them here today. Where everyone does whatever in his own opinion seems right. The key word here is opinion. Okay? If you don't have the Torah and you don't have Messiah, then your opinion might be valid for doing taxes. Your opinion might be valid for maybe being painting your house a certain color. I'm sure Rav Will, in his painting business, uh, was said to people, uh, you really want that color? You're going to hate it next year. <laughs> you might like it now because it's in color, but, you know, it's an opinion. I'm sure many of us that are watching this show can remember bell bottoms, bell bottom pants. That was the opinion of some idiot people, and they still are ugly today. I remember, remember we had those winged collars, those collars that were gigantic, where you can look like it would take off. Opinions. Do you think your opinion matters to God? Let's kick it over to Rav Will. We're going to be talking about opinions because, hey, in politics, there's lots of opinions, right there, Rav Will? Oh, yeah, we deal with a lot of opinions in that realm. Oh. Some better than others. But yeah, no, my opinion, my opinion about what we're talking about is that God doesn't, he doesn't want you to live by your opinion. It's never, it's never described as a positive thing in scripture. You can search the whole of scripture and anytime it talks about men doing what's right in their own opinion, see the Torah here, Deuteronomy 12, 8, 12, 9 says you won't do things like you do them here by your own opinion. Well, what was going on in 12, 8, and 12, 9? When they were living by their opinions, nothing was going well for them out there in that sand. Nothing at all. Another time that is mentioned in Scripture is at the end of the book of Judges. The book of Judges, by the way, 
it's really called shelf team, but for you guys that don't know, judges, I would recommend you study that book very carefully, especially the last line, because the last line says, at that time, there was no king in Israel, and everybody just did what was right in his own opinion. So read the book of Judges and see if you want to live like that. Because that's what living by your own opinion gets, because your heart's deceitful and it's wicked. So much so that the Lord said, you can't know how deceitful and wicked your own heart is. You're under the ether. Just like in politics, a lot of people are under the, under the ether, and they have to break free before they can see where they were. Well, that's where you are if you're listening to your own heart and your own opinion. You're under a big anesthesia cloud, and everything seems okay. It's like a drug addict, like somebody that smokes pot every day. He thinks everything's fine, because that stuff is turning off his ability to care. Or to, even when he's not intoxicated, his ability to be concerned or upset is drastically reduced. So it's only... It's only whenever he dries out and totally quits, he gets out from under the influence totally, then he can actually see clearly. So you have to get out from under the influence of your own opinion and what your own heart's telling you and look at the things the way God wants and then you can see what's really going on. Those are my shekels on this. It's interesting that you, you bring up the op opinion like with, with drugs because half America or a third of America right now thinks that, you know, pot smoking is, is okay. You know, a, a, thir a fair amount of Americans think that homosexuality is okay. But both of those things in the physical are not okay. Pot smoking is going to ruin your brain. It has been proven you know, we had war on drugs from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So 90s and the 2000s, war on drugs. So why did it change now? Because somebody's opinion, the youth's opinion, uh, we want our sin. Homosexuality. Homosexuality um, is also another opinion, okay? Because physically... You're putting something in a hole that is meant for exit only, okay? Your anus is meant for exit only. And when you penetrate it, it rips a closed system, okay, causing much problems, you know, and viruses and things like that. It's an opinion, well, I love this man. I love, you know, this man says he loves this man. It's an opinion. But physically... It's a wrong opinion, okay? So the scriptures give clear understanding about drugs. Outside of heaven are those who do drugs. Outside of heaven are the homosexuals. Now, let's go to another opinion. Let's get the, the third Jew here, and maybe we'll get the ninth opinion here. The Jew that likes mariachi music. My opinion of mariachi music is not good. Actually, you know, certain the sounds we have to praise with many instruments, you know. <laughs> Everything is biblical in here. Um, well, we can see uh, for the Lord, our opinion is not, doesn't matter to Him. Unless we do what He says, unless we do what He requires to do, because we also have to remind Him. And in all the feasts and all the holidays, we have to remind him, tell him, Lord, I'm here. You command us to do this. Please, I'm here, you know. Here I am. He named me. But when we disobey his word, when we're not walking in his ways, that is when the opinion doesn't matter to him. He created us to, to have a righteous life, uh, to follow him. Because there is um, many many ways that we reckon uh, we how we know that we're pleasing God, 
all what he wants us to be obedience to him. And first, he says, do this, and that's it. We're not saying, uh, excuse me, uh, can I, can I? And he says, just let's, I want you to do this. And simple as that. Well, you're listening to the Remnants Call the Sledgehammer Show. We're going to take a quick commercial message. We'll be right back with more opinions. This is the Shalom Ranger with WTRC Radio. We'll be right back after a short commercial break with more news, true news, that is really happening around the world. Remember, in everything you do, praise Adonai. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our king praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there, because Shabbat is so special to him There is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom. Welcome back to the Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. Once again, I'm your host for the show, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Going Messianic Congregation. You know, I, we had a break early because I had to do something. I had to let, had this really beautiful person come into the congregation today. Man who owns a, a tuning company. And I've never met 
a Catholic like this before. A humble soul, but knowing the word that he was taught. And when you're trying to teach somebody the word, you know, me, I'm usually, you know, really smacking hard. But as Rav Shaul, my cousin Paul, said, you got to be all things to all people. I'm trying to steer him, and he's never heard. You know, he goes, he says he goes to Mass every Sunday. You know, he prays the rosary. His wife did this beautiful thing for the veterans and uh, the cemetery for them. You know, really beautiful, godly things. Really beautiful, godly things. Let me switch to this scripture. The Brit Hanashah, Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23 states, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do what my Father in heaven wants. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we expel demons in your name? Didn't we perform many miracles in your name? Then I, Yeshua the Messiah, will tell them to their faces, I never knew you. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. The man had a, a sweet, special personality to him. I was like, what a, what a nice guy. And, and a craftsman, unbelievable. It's very rare to meet somebody with skill anymore. Somebody who takes pride in their work. Somebody who knows, the guy knew everything about pianos. He's tuning uh, you know, an acoustic piano for us, somebody that donated beautiful piano to us that you know, and he took you know, many hours and he didn't charge that much a real craftsman he knew everything about the strings and how they're wound and every little piece about the piano but I, I fear for his eternal soul he was taught that only John was a Jew only Yochanan the priest, the Catholic Church, taught him that only John was a Jew. And he's describing what the Catholics called the Eucharist to me. I know what it is, but I'm letting him, letting him talk. When, you know, this has become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, ringy dingy ding. And he really, every, you know, he, he has sincerity. He really had sincerity in his demeanor, his face, his body language, his voice. When he says, when I take that host, I really believe that that has become the body of Messiah. So I said, well, that's very interesting. This Matthew 7 scripture is for you. Because you can do all these great works. You can go to Mass every Sunday which is the wrong day because that breaks the fourth commandment. I told them how the days of the week don't have names in the Bible. They have numbers except for the one. And I said, you know, he's, and we talked about the Pesach, the Passover. So I said, you're doing what man's opinion is. These things that you may be doing are beautiful. But unless you can point to a scripture that proves what you're doing, it is only man's opinion. And his eyes were lighting up and they were getting bigger. It was a great, beautiful, warm discussion. And, and I, you know, I know it's hard for you guys to believe. I didn't raise my voice. I spoke very calmly because you have to be all things to all people. People don't need a sledgehammer always if they're li willing to listen and have an intelligent discussion. I said, well, as a Jew, that doesn't line up with Scripture to me. You know, it almost was last week's message, but the Lord gave me the thing about Jerusalem. What I'm you know, contemplating and meditating and asking the Lord if this is what he wants this week 
is a message about why don't Jews believe in Jesus? Because you try to tell this to a Jew. This body and blood has become a Messiah. And Jews are like, the heck are you talking about? I, I, can't, I can't believe in that. that. That doesn't line up anywhere in the Bible. But it's the Catholic's opinion that this has become the body and blood of what they call Jesus Christ. What say you there, Ravwell? It's a very interesting topic. That was very interesting. I wonder what they think those fingers and toes and noses and stuff off of the supposed former saints have become behind the glass. Because, you know, there are Catholic cathedrals that have that stuff. Uh, but since this is the Sledgehammer show, you know, we can say these kinds of things. We wouldn't do it in Road to Emmaus, right? We would, we would be like you were today in Road to Emmaus, all things to all people. But since this is the Sledgehammer show... I'll just go on and tell you, Jews can't believe in Jesus because Jesus was the original uh, Greek transgender. You know, if you look at all those pictures, he's wearing girls' clothes, no zitzi. You know? So what's the Son of God doing dressed like a woman? Come on. So they they created this false illusion through their artwork and through a lot of their writings. He's probably never read the Brit Hadashah, uh, Matthew seven twenty one. He's probably only read things like the book of Mary. Yes, they have a book of Mary. Uh, the book of Syriac. They really have that. That's really... And they read that stuff really a lot more. Well, they're like the Jews and Talmud. You know, the whole most of the whole synagogues, the Orthodox, are run by Talmud. They're not really run by the Torah. And so your Catholic stuff that and you're right, it is pretty. It sounds wonderful. They have some very talented, meticulous people put those sermons together and services. But Nothing in scripture dictates anything they're doing. So, you're right to fear for his salvation. I talked to him about, you know, St. Peter's Basilica, you know, in Rome, and the Astropoles. And, you know, I even talked to him about the Christmas tree. He, What was fascinating about this, and then we'll come more back to Sledgehammer, was nobody had ever told him. And he says he reads the Bible all the time, reads the New Testament all the time. He reads, reads King Jimmy. And I said, you need to, you know, he says, I have a hard time understanding that. It's like, because we don't speak like that anymore. But Messiah is very clear here. He doesn't care about your opinion. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, only those who do what my Father in heaven wants. So what does the Father in heaven want? It's not a... Heaven is not a democracy. Heaven's not going to have the popular vote to see who's going to be mayor of the new Jerusalem. Okay? What do you think there, Rab Ed? You know, you had that Catholic background, and, you know, I mean, the guy was... Super nice. I mean, you know, it's hard. You know, sometimes it's like hard, you know, you know, trying not to sledgehammer them. You're right in that, Rabbi, because uh, I know many people that uh, their desire is to what they what they teach us from 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 the from from our you know childhood. Um, they did a great job putting uh, respect, putting uh, fear to their beliefs. That's why in the Catholic Church, you go sit down, and that's it. That's your job, and pay attention. Stand up in the Word of God, sit down, and that's it. 
and these days, when you see people going to to the church or the congregation, Christians or either Messianic, they run around all over the place, you know. But they their heart and the Catholic is that the submission, submission to to the saint that they can see it, to the idols, you know. They've been lying their, their whole life to fear those idols. Uh, that's why the Lord says, you know, in, this, in Psalm 119, 165 says, Great peace have those who love your laws, and nothing cause them a stumble. Depends how they teach them, you know. We know what is the, the, the truth. And we know that this become uh, something hard and harder for us, because Satan always gonna be try to put in a boundary for that. But we can see, as Ralph Will says, there is the Book of Mary and all that. They wake up in the morning really diligent. You gotta stand up, to do your rosary, the juju ju ju beans that you said. <laughs> You see those, do all those prayers, the credo, I used to do that too. And that was every single day. Like for us, it's the Shema. But once when your eyes open, then I believe is when your heart decided to follow God. But if you, if you don't give the heart to the Lord, it's hard. It's not going to be, you have the chance, you lose the chance. You know, that's why people said, how come this Catholic who gives everything, who who give everything to the poor, he's really nice, he's really humble, can go to hell. Well, God's laws are clear. Shema, you know, how to do, listen. He says, pay attention carefully, you know, especially for Shabuot that we come. He said, pay attention. Look the the moon, you know. Do not do this. Do not do that. A simple instructions, what the Torah says, you know. I spoke to him about this verse, and he never read it. You know, Revelation twenty verse twelve. And I saw the dead, both great and small, standing in front of the throne. Books were opened, and another book was opened, the book of life. And the dead were judged from what was written in the books according to what they had done. When we make our opinion, like, you know, so many Christians, Catholics, you know, that Sunday is a day of worship, that totally contradicts the fourth commandment. So understand that in your opinion, it is a, is a balancing scale. Okay? So I said... Well, you're doing all these great works. You know, your wife is doing this for the veterans. She's housing two homeless veterans. Awesome. Great stuff. That's going to be a good thing in your good column. Okay, so that's going to take your scale and go... Rrr. Then I said, well, what's the very first thing in Scripture that's called holy? It's the Sabbath. Genesis 2-3, and Abraham's not even born. So he gives the Sabbath to the Gentiles because there are no Jews yet born. So you're not doing the Sabbath, you're doing Sunday. Now it takes your good work that went, and it takes your bad side and goes, and now you're good. You're, you're housing those two homeless because Yeshua said, what you do for the least of these, you do for me. This is good. But the Sabbath is the most weightiest part of God's commandment because it, what's the very first thing he calls holy? It's the Sabbath. So when you get to this this trial and i saw the dead both great and small standing in front of the throne and books are open what are those books this is a jew talking to another jew okay so your opinion is not going to matter well i thought this was more important than keeping the sabbath what does what does that does god agree with your opinion you know somebody tells me my opinion you know i i become a mean guy i'm you know saying stupid people are stupid well they are 
like Paul says in the Galatians, you stupid Galatians! Paul, you're not going to win people to the Lord that way. You know, you're supposed to coddle them and give them ice cream and, you know, buy them off, you know? What do you think there, Ravwell? What do you think about this, this, um, the dead, great and small, and the books are open, and your opinion, I want my house mauve-colored? No on that mauve. Absolutely not. Absolutely. In fact, I can't believe you said that. But anyway, moving on. Yeah, the books will be opened, and you're absolutely right. The judging, yes, you house homeless veterans. Good for you. However, in Ezekiel, you hear that the Sabbath is a sign between the Lord and his people. If you don't keep that Sabbath, he will say, I don't know you, because that's the sign. That's 2020, Ezekiel 2020, by the way, for anybody that's taking notes, wanting to look that up. Uh, the Sabbath is a sign between the Lord and his folks. So the good works that Paul talked about, the good doings that uh, everybody talks about, those are just menstrual rags, filthy rags, next to what God wants and what he sees as holy. And the first thing, you're so correct, the first thing he said was holy was the Sabbath. And that is one of the very few things the Lord said this will be a sign between you and me. The Sabbath and circumcision uh, are two things that come immediately to mind. Where the Lord said, this is, how, this is how people will know that you're mine. So, so you're absolutely right. Uh, those good works that are good according to men. But men don't know the hearts of other men. You know, for all that guy knows, for all that guy knows, he's feeding those homeless guys so they can take their money and go buy drugs. He doesn't know their hearts. So what he sees is a good work. Somebody else may be taking his generosity and using it for total evil. So men's good works, aside from obeying the commandments of God, are nothing. I think you hit the nail on the head about the men's works, okay? You're doing man's works. In Numbers, Bamidbar 15, verses 39 and 40, it is a CT for you to look at and thereby remember all of Jehovah's mitzvot and obey them so that you won't go around wherever your own heart and eyes lead you to prostitute yourself. But it will help you remember and obey all my mitzvot and be holy for your Elohim. It comes down to that. Where your own heart and eyes lead you to prostitute yourself. We were talking about drugs earlier in the show. You know, everybody, you know, there's a lot of young people and even a lot of uh, 50, 60 year olds now, 70 year olds saying, you know, uh, it's okay to smoke pot. You know, it's, it's not really bad. But God says that drug users are outside of heaven. Okay? When you want to do what your own heart and lead you to prostitute yourself, what makes your opinion valid? Because, you know, the Muslims who are blowing up things, as they did in Afghanistan today, their opinion is valid to them. It is a wrong opinion in accordance with the word of God. Okay? So let's take this to an, an edge, as the sledgehammer does. Because let's take this argument, let's do a Paulian argument. Okay, so here you want to keep the, the rosary, you want to uh, keep Sunday worship, you want to do, you know, uh, what's a Kwanzaa, you want to do all this stuff, you want to be homosexuals, you want to be men wearing women's clothing. What makes that opinion valid? Okay, because somebody who's stronger. Someone who's got, you know, because this is, you know, if we're going to do without God's rules, 
then Genghis Khan is going to win. Hitler is going to win. Um, the Vikings are going to win. You know, not the football Vikings, but the real Vikings. Okay? Um, Sun Tzu is going to win because he knew how to fight. Okay? The one with the biggest army doesn't always win, but the one with the most skill wins in the, in the natural. Now, in the spiritual, it's a different thing. But your opinion doesn't matter to God. You know, when God was done with the, you know, what, what this revelation said, that Yeshua mounts his heart and, and he comes and, you know, with a power and might and a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth, and nobody's going to be able to block him. So your opinion doesn't matter. Rav Ed, what, do you, what, what say you? I think that the, the, the opinion that, that we're talking, um, it's got to be um, how we recognize basically um, going to, to the beginning. As in First Johannan 5 2 also says, here's how we know that we love God's children when we love God. That is the key for. For us to understand how do we know first we have to love God is that the first commandment he give us he is once again what I'm saying he's really really clear that first we have to know him we have to, to see his desire if we don't see that we're gonna go to the Revelation 2012 you know where we're gonna end it we're gonna end it outside of, of the heaven and not only us is the one who's under our, our covering you know family, my kids, um, we have to, to understand that, how to get God's uh, attention by being obedient. We bring a smile at Him, and with being a disobedience, then our opinion doesn't matter to Him at all. He don't, he don't even want to see us. Then it's when we struggle our lives, and then we we cry to, please, Lord, forgive me, let me go back to your ways. But we have to suffer. We have to be, we have to pass the test. And in this, and this, and this way, basically. Got to pass the test in this way, rather it said. It's going to be an interesting thing, you know. You know, like I said, th this man honestly believed that that wafer, that little cookie, a little piece of matzah, a round piece of matzah, so it's a shmora matzah, <laughs> becomes the body and blood, you know, of the Messiah. Then what's occurring is you're re-crucifying him each and every week. But Messiah said on the cross, it's finished. So how could you keep redoing it? You know, do this in memory of me. Well, then you're re-crucifying him. Okay? So when you're standing in front of the throne, this, I mean, this is, you know, he really didn't think about this because Catholics don't teach this. You know, you're going to go there and you're going to die. It's like, when you die, you're done. You know, I said to him, and this got him a little bit, this is purgatory. You're living in purgatory. You know, but when we get, when we wake up, you're going to be in Messiah's court. You're going to be walking in that court. And if he's on the left-hand side, that's not a good thing. Because the prosecution is on the left-hand side. Okay? Now, if he's on the right-hand side, well, then you got a nice Jewish lawyer and he works for free. Because you're his. But when we want to do what's our own opinion, you know, some people, like Will, I don't know why, you know, he, he's growing broccoli, you know, in, in his garden. I'm like, oh, that, that's like demonic. It's from the pit of hell. And then, he, you know, he cuts off the top, and then he says it, it gets more florets, and it keeps growing. And, I'm like, we should make stink bombs out of these things. But that's his opinion, okay? Uh, well, I know he, you know. He says it tastes different. <laughs> okay? But opinion about that type of stuff is fun. But when it comes to God's word, how do we know that we're pleasing God? 
why in the, the let's just go back one and then we'll give you guys the last little bit here why does Yeshua say I don't know you get away from me you workers of lawlessness because if they're doing things in their own opinion they're doing some of God which a lot of people do some of God they're not many atheists real atheists okay so they're doing some of God but mostly not much of God what do you think there have well and to keep growing that broccoli stuff I just had some this evening it was great but no the ones that are gonna be told I don't know you here's how it happens <clears throat> You're not there on the Sabbath. Not there on his holy days. Don't even know about his holy days. I mean, the church doesn't teach it, so. Or if they even acknowledge it, they say, well, we don't have to do that anymore. You know, Jesus took care of that, whatever. He, he fulfilled all of that, you know, so we don't have to. Imagine that. God himself became a man, came down here, allowed himself to be humiliated on our behalf and crucified on our behalf. For what? So you can now eat pig? You can now blatantly violate the Shabbat? So the ones that are going to be told, I don't know you, are the ones that aren't there for Shabbat, aren't there for his holy days. But hey, they're front and center on Apollo's day, Sunday, and, you know, they're, they're front and center to do good works, according to man's opinion. Good works, like serving those homeless people broccoli, cream of broccoli soup. I've had your last words, and we'll wrap up this edition of the Sledgehammer Show, Sledgehammer Show 176. I do believe to for all these opinions that the Lord thinks that he don't he don't he don't it doesn't matter for him the the opinions from us from us we should do, do all his requirements without complaint that would be my my shackling here you know do his what he commands us to do and not to say. Like we always say, like, don't say peer, don't say a war, just being obedient to God's ways, God's commandments. The bottom line is, everybody, if you can't find it in Scripture, if you can't find Yeshua the Messiah doing it, then don't do it. And that's what I said to the man. Yeshua said, follow me. And that's our job. He is the Lord of the Shabbat. He showed us how to live our lives, and you can't go wrong with doing what he did. But there is a possibility that you are wrong if you're not doing as he did. Yeshua the Messiah said, be holy for I am holy. Yeshua the Messiah said, not one jot or tittle will be lost from the law until heaven and earth pass away. Yeshua said, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Your opinion doesn't matter. You need to be taught the Word of God. And that's what Beth Goyim teaches from Genesis to Revelation. We've been doing it a long time, and uh, we don't change our stance on anything. Okay? We are 100% legalistic because our Father in Heaven would never give us something bad. You've been listening to the Remnants Call, the Sledgehammer Show. I bid you an amen and an amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. 
and click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend a day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our king praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978 to Yeshua. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua.
Shalom. Shalom.